to talk to you about something that I think all of us can identify with. You can either live your dreams or live your fears. And I think the majority of people actually are not living their dreams, but are living their fears. So I want to ask you a question. What are your fears? What are you afraid of? What are you scared of? Because we all have fears, don't we? We all have something that's blocking us, that's holding us back. And as we begin to look at life, what we realize is that the reason that most people are not living out their true potential, are not doing all of the things that they would really like to do, is because of fear. Some people call fear false evidence or expectations appearing real. I'm reminded of the story of um, a guy that was living in an area where he had some new neighbors and these neighbors had a bulldog. And when he came home every day, this bulldog used to chase him about a half a block from his house every day. He would have to streak home. I mean, he would just run. This bulldog would be right on his heels. And so he just got tired of that because he would go home about a half a block away from home. He would look around for this bulldog and he would see him. And he would go walking casually along and this bulldog would come out of nowhere. Woo! And start chasing him. He'd run home. So this one day he just got tired. And so when the bulldog was running after him, he started running, he saw a rock, and he stopped to pick it up to throw at the bulldog. And when the bulldog got up on him, he started barking, he realized the bulldog didn't have any teeth in his mouth. <laughs> then he started chasing the bulldog. If you don't get all the way from it, because <laughs> the most the bulldog could have done is gummy, you know. <laughs> and so, you know what? Most people go through life running scared. Running scared from things that have no teeth in them <laughs> because they're false expectations appearing real. That see, we're brilliant enough to scare ourselves to death. You realize that? There are some people actually who get a kick out of scaring themselves to death. <laughs> I remember the last frightening movie I saw. It was The Exorcist. I will never forget. <laughs> I was so frightened when I came home. I'll never forget, I drove in the driveway and I had already called my former wife and said, listen, turn the lights on. <laughs> I was coming in the driveway and I, and I was getting out of the car and all of a sudden I couldn't get out. I stopped blowing my horn. I said, Madeline, they got me, they got me. <laughs> she came to the kitchen and said, take your seatbelt loose, fool. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, okay, okay. I was frightened out of my wits. But there are a lot of people who they get off on that. They love it. I'm a person that, I, I, my brother is a paratrooper. My twin brother, he's in the military, a career man. I would love to jump out of an airplane to parachute. I'm scared though. <laughs> I mean, I really admire my brother for that. I would really love to be macho man like that. What are the things that you fear that's been keeping you from living your dream? that's been keeping you from doing some things that you would like to do. Just think about those things. And how do we begin to handle that? Abraham Maslow said that the life is about growth. And he said, you could either go back to your comfort zone and there you won't find any growth, or you must willing, be willing to go forward and face your fears again and again and again because you're never going to have a, a fear-free existence. I mean, some fear is acceptable and legitimate. There are some things that you, you really should be afraid of. Now, you shouldn't allow it to immobilize you. You acknowledge it, you take it into account, and you carry yourself accordingly. There are times that we should proceed with caution, but it's the difference between being stopped by fear. It's the difference between having a fear and the fear having you. So what do we do? One, acknowledge it and knowing that it's okay. Don't condemn yourself for being afraid. It's perfectly fine to have some fears. You acknowledge your fears, you embrace those fears, and then you move on. You act on whatever it is that you fear. Because once you embrace it, see, what you resist will persist. 
What you resist will persist. So one of the most important things is, is to begin to embrace your fear. The fear of bodily harm, that's legitimate. When I was a disc jockey in Columbus, Ohio, you know, I was young, about 22, 23, thought I was tough, and I was on the air, and Al Green, who was a great performer at that time, and still is now, now singing gospel music, had a record, his first hit record was Backup Train. So a guy came in the town and was impersonating Al Green. I happened to know Al Green because I'd already booked him. And so when I found out this guy was impersonating Al Green, I came on the air and did an editorial about him, and I exposed him. He was a rather um, big fellow, and so he um, had the word out <laughs> that when I see this guy less from the disc jockey, I'm going to knock him in the mouth for having a big mouth. So I was driving down Main Street in Columbus, Ohio, had my son in a car, and I always had this little saying, hey, if anybody ever put a threat on me, I'm going to make him honor it. So I saw this guy in the street. So I pull around. I said, excuse me, I'll be right back. Got out of the car. I said, hey, man, I heard you said that you were looking for me. I'm Les Brown. He said, you are? I said, yeah. I said, what is it? I'm the one that said that you are an imposter. I said, I want to know what you're going to do about it. He opened his coat and he had a gun there. I said, but whatever I said to hurt your feelings, I want you to know. <laughs> Acknowledge your fears, carry yourself accordingly. <laughs> and do what makes sense for you. Well, one major fear I've always had is a fear of a dentist. And this fear had me. I didn't have that fear. And what really reinforced it, you got to watch things that can feed your fear. I saw a movie that most people would not remember. This movie was starring Dustin Hoffman. It's called The Marathon Man with Lawrence Olivier. I mean, he's trying to get a confession out of here. And he took this drill out. Let me tell you something. When he went in Duffman Hoffman's mouth with that drill, I had a dollar worth of popcorn. <laughs> that popcorn went everywhere. Oh! <laughs> Do you know I could not go to the dentist for five years? I had left broadcasting, went to the Ohio legislature, had an impacted wisdom tooth. Now, that hurts. And I would call, and as soon as the people would answer the phone, I would hang up. That's how frightened I was. Dr. Hamler's office, boom, I'd hang up. <laughs> then I got to the point where I could just ask for an appointment, hello? And I wouldn't give my real name. <laughs> because I knew I wasn't going to keep it. <laughs> I'd give anybody's name. Joe Jiggly Jim, it didn't matter. Then pretty soon I got to the point where I could give my name. It was about four years after that, you know? I <laughs> said, so my name is Les Brown. Then I would call back and say, look here, due to my legislative agenda, I won't be able to make it. <laughs> so the lady finally said on the phone, she said, you're scared, aren't you? I said, no, I'm not. She said, then why don't you come in? I said, that's none of your business. <laughs> she said, you're not coming in because you're scared. I wish you just would not waste our time. And she hung up. I said, you have no right to do that to people like me, you know? So finally, it'll make a long and short of it. I was hurting so bad. I said, wait a minute, I've got to do something. And I said, what am I afraid of? Go there and handle it. And I said, man, I said, Dr. Hamill, I just can't hear this drill. I mean, if you can do whatever, I just don't, I don't need to hear this drill, this drill, that sound, you know, that's the, what gets me, that drill. Don't pull that drill out on me. <laughs> he said, just calm down, calm down. And it wasn't really bad as I thought it was. One of the things you find out that when you face your fears, it's not as bad as you think it is. And when people tell you, I, I just can't do it, I, I can't handle it, I mean, really, 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 I can't handle it, what they're envisioning is that they're not going to be here. They're going to clock out like you're going to die. And guess what? We all had occasions when we confronted our fears, we had to do something we felt uncomfortable with, we didn't want to do it, and we did not die. They didn't come take us and put us in a box somewhere. Am I right? So what we've got to begin to do, how do we handle that? What's the process? Because it's all up in here. One, I think, is imagine the worst case scenario. I just imagine that he went in my mouth and with this drill and that I just croaked out. <laughs> <laughs> then I imagine, that's the worst case scenario. Then I had another technique I use. Visualize yourself being more than able and capable of handling it.
And I used to have a tremendous inferiority complex about speaking before people that I felt who had more going for them than I did. Because I'm not college trained, I used to feel that college people were the most intelligent people on the planet. And there was nothing I had to say for them. And what will, I, what will they listen to me for? That's the way I felt. And so I had to, to visualize myself speaking before them, speaking before various audiences that had more going for them than I did, and realize and appreciate my own value and that I was a worthwhile person even though I didn't have all going for me. I didn't have the money, I didn't have the education that they had. So part of the process is seeing yourself being worthy, being capable, having what you need to make you a worthwhile person and that you're more than able and that you deserve to be listened to or you deserve to have that dream and that passion and whatever it is that you see and envision there. You've got to see it in your mind's eye and know that you've got what it takes. Repeat after me, please. I must see, I must see in my mind's eye, in my mind's eye see, myself see myself confronting my fears, confronting my fears handling, my fears, handling my fears. I'm more than able. If you want to see an awesome clip of a young Les Brown, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. It's hard changing your life. It was hard when just over three years ago, in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan,